and all that. Really? Yeah. Nice. Was this now? Was this one of your ideas? Yeah, one of the ideas back spring 2014 that we started doing it, like with 27 different people. Yeah. So yeah. Nice. That's pretty sweet. Well, I gotta thank you, man, for uh, giving me the opportunity to just play my music and and letting me say hi. I gotcha. Yeah. yeah it's. Oh, I forgot. I gotta switch that over. Hey, I forgot to switch it over to the 3D option on our stream. Oh, really? So what does that mean? <laughs> oh, now everyone sees you actually on the stream. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. So you, how's how's life in Ohio? I haven't been in Ohio in a little bit. Eh, it's not bad. You know, rain, all that cold. It was warm last week. Now it's all of a sudden getting all warm again. Yeah, 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 yeah. So. I feel like we've broken through, though. I feel it. Today, it is super nice out, and I'm finally just, fingers crossed, that's all it's going to be from now on. Oh, I'm hoping the same, man. I'm hoping the same. Yeah. Did you have a nice winter? It wasn't that bad. Mm hmm Wasn't that bad at all. That's a good thing, because winter can be sometimes rough. <laughs> oh, big time, especially up here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I think last time I was out there was... uh. Maybe this time of year, give or take. I've had some good drives. Good drives mm -hmm. just, just up and down the highways. Okay. And uh, it's, been a, it's been a bit, though. It's been a little bit. But I look forward. I was like going out in that neck of the woods to the Ohio, Indiana, Illinois sort of drive. I gotcha. One thing that always blew my mind, and you might take this for granted, but for I'm right now over in New England, so... Uh, you know, it's funny, my son calls them pinwheels, but you know the turbines? Mm hmm I'd never seen anything like it in my whole life. I, uh, was in Indiana, driving, I think, up to Wisconsin or something like that, and there had to be over a thousand of these things. So the eye, me, like, just, just, I couldn't see the end of them. Just endless fields and all these pinwheels. And, uh, yeah. I'll never forget that. That was amazing. Like us up here where we're at, down, what is it, what, no, Euclid, it's, yep. um, well, Lincoln Electric, they have a huge, giant one, massive one, that's, it would blow many of the ones that you've probably seen away, and just looking uh, at uh, that uh, one. Okay. It All was right. so bad that they had to shut down when they got it off the boat and that, when they were shipping it from down in yeah. Cleveland down. They shut down yeah. the roadway at night to transfer to pieces. <laughs> wow. Man, it's a mammoth pinwheel. Who would have thought? I, it, I'm always amazed that those things can, can go, too. I mean, they can start getting, they can start moving. As long as those, those little propellers don't fly off, I'm okay. <laughs> oh, big time. Yeah, that one, that thing's massive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I believe it. I believe it. So what's uh so what's new? Anything good? Uh, just doing this, man. College, yeah. running the radio station that Yeah. You know. Having getting people coming on, playing music, other different things. Nice, you know. that sounds good. How long you been doing the radio thing for? Since spring oh nine. Oh, cool. Nice. So this is something that you kind of found your way, and then it's just stuck. Yeah, it started running it in fall 10 to now. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah. So what do you say is one of your favorite things about it? Just just like running into new music? or, or... Running into new music, yeah. Big time. Because I used to sort of be in the music, all that. Fifth grade mm -hmm. band, middle school, nice. high yeah, school. Yeah. Uh, cool. What did you play? Trombone. Oh, I like that. Oh, yeah, nice. A little bit off the beaten path, just a hair. So what kind of bands are you more of like uh, Scott-esque or, or what type of bands did you find yourself playing with? Well, that, would... that was just, you know, the school band and that. Then ended oh, up... Yeah, yeah. My sophomore year, the bass player in the jazz band was leaving. Well, they came up to me because no other people that did bass stuff said, well, hey, well, 
You know, what do you want to learn the guitar in that? Well, we need a bass player in that for jazz band. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, the old, the old one too with bass players. Bass players, for some reason, are a dime a dozen. Yeah. yeah no one else said they went like three other people and then tried and they said, "Well, would you be interested over summer sort of learn it in that?" Well, we need you, you know, by fall. It's like, yeah, I'll give it a shot, you know. Yeah. Let's see what happens. How'd it work out? Not bad. Nice. <laughs> Not bad. It took a lot over the summer and that the three months and that, you know, in high school and that, trying to learn that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, think... it did stick it up. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. There you go. Portrait is bass, so when in doubt, you're like, oh my god, I just gotta find the root note. Alright, here we go. There, There's an A. There's a G, you know. But, oh, uh, like me, I never played a guitar until that moment. Ever. Oh, so no string instrument at all, huh? Yeah, nothing. And I said, oh, yeah, you want to learn this? Yeah, we need a bass player. Oh, that's that's amazing. You go from playing literally with your hands and, and blowing and everything to... That must have been kind of strange. Oh, yeah, I oh, couldn't imagine. Because that's one instrument. Like, I, I love instruments. Like, I, uh, like I'll... Acoustic's my big thing, but like I play banjo. I've got a mandolin. I love singing. I play harmonica. But for some reason, wind instruments of any type, you know, whether it's sax, any of those, I'm always kind of at a level where I like to just sit, take it in, and enjoy the fact that someone can do that so well because I don't think that's in the cards for me with all the stuff I play. Totally different, uh, what is it? Just totally different style, medium, you know, way of playing, everything, you know. I gotcha. Yeah, I was going to ask you into that. What does your musical portfolio include in that? Yeah, you don't yeah. really find people doing the banjo much. <laughs> it's a shame, isn't it? I know. <laughs> you don't know how long it took me to find someone that actually played one to get a group that had a banjo in here. That was yeah, my yeah. like goal. I'm, I'm surprised. Out in Ohio, I'd hope that there would be somewhat of a decent uh, scene out there. Well, try and find a group that has a banjo in it. <laughs> you know, that's like a dime a dozen. It took me like <laughs> two years. <laughs> wow. Uh, and the funny part is like when it's so funny because when people see a banjo, they do two things, right? First, they're like, wow, what is that? You know, and then if you play anything remotely cognizant, anything. Yeah. They're on away. And B, the dueling banjos for some reason. Deliverance. I don't know why. It's always brought up. Like, can you play that? Dun, 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 dun. Poor banjo players. That's the only thing I feel for. I didn't do that to them, though. Nice, nice, nice. I didn't do it. My life goal, because it sort of sounds so cool in that, I wanted to actually get a banjo player here to play. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was That's the more smart. thing. That's a smart move. That is. What kind of music did he play? Do you remember? <laughs> These are alternate rockish in that neat group. Yeah, um, Window Dogs. Right. Cool. So they totally did something a little different than your classic knee smacking, um, you know. Yeah. Old time style. Yeah, not the bluegrass, you know, sort yeah, of country yeah, yeah. sound and all that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I was nice. looking for that unique thing in that. And I that always. Was... Huh. Okay. Oh, you can go. Oh, I was gonna say, uh, I don't know. I think like the I've always loved the banjo, right? But I didn't play it very long, and maybe I think in 2012 or 13, okay. um, I was gonna record this tune, and I'm like, man, you know what? I think banjo sound pretty cool. So you know, I trucked over to Guitar Center and bought this banjo for like I don't even know. I still have it. It's right over here. It's like it's, I think it cost me like 80 bucks. And uh, of course, you know, I don't want uh, if. if I don't want any banjo players to judge me on this, but of course, I'm sure that any banjo player would know exactly what I'm going to say. What did I do? Seeing I had, like, literally only a few days to come up with a part, I tuned it to a guitar tuning, you know. But at the same time, kind of figured it out. You know, I played with my fingers, too, so I kind of figured out how to make it sound, you know. But then I got in this weird position a while ago where I was just, like, teaching some lessons, and this guy who runs a place says, hey, can you... I, I signed someone up to do banjo with you. Can you play it? <laughs> and that's, so that was the beginning of me being like, well, 
I'm not going to tell this guy anything, but basically I'm learning to teach myself while we're having a lesson together. Yeah. You know, so, um, after that, I mean, it's been, it's been, it's a fun instrument. It's really bizarre. I really like it. It's interesting because the, one of the highest tone strings is actually on the top. Yeah. And unlike most string instruments that are traditional, like a guitar or something like that, that's just not the case. Uh, and it, they're all in open tuning, so that's what gives you that that kind of water wheel sound, you know. But a lot yeah. of people play it in so many cool different ways now. Most definitely. Especially when they actually brought that and they were playing that. The guy yeah. for, somewhat forgot the chords in that. He was playing it in a different key. Oh, that ought to sound interesting. Oh, it was like a second. Was this like a second and a half? Then he switched on over and up, but still, it was worth it. Yeah, yeah, judge yeah. And all that. It still, it sounded a little weird at first, but <laughs> you know, <laughs> oh, that is good. I like that. Uh, yeah, it's some we can call it. What is it like? Um, prog- pro- progressive uh, alternative something. There you go. Yeah, It'll change keys every two seconds or something. That could be a good excuse for it I guess. so do you still play do you still play bass or other stuff or i haven't played anything a lot i want to say yeah. about five years yeah at least five six years nice so the radio is kind of taking up everything just soaking that all in yeah but then i and then looking around and all that all the music around the local area and all that you know. Oh, yeah. No, if you love Yeah. Yeah, you eventually you... get back to it. You never know. Hey, there's some cheap banjos out there. You could be a uh, a pioneer. Just get yourself some overalls. and. <laughs> True. I'll give it to yeah. you. You can just go on the field, get a little grass, plop it in your mouth, and uh, just soak it in. <laughs> Big time. You know, this is, I heard this, and mark my but I heard the banjo is traditionally an African instrument from Africa. Huh. Now, whether that's true or not, I don't know. You know, in this day and age, uh, I don't know what to believe anymore. But, right. uh, but that'd be, that's kind of fascinating because it's totally usurped. Its image is so different, you know. It's a stereotypical image. Big time. Big time. But, yeah, I've fallen in love with a lot of those instruments. I haven't picked up a violin. Oh, I'm going to try to figure out a few tones when I do my pre-production. I'll try to get some straightforward notes, you know. I'm not going to be doing a Stradivarius style anytime soon. But all those instruments I've, I've come to love. Mandolin, all those are kind of neat in their own way. Big time. <laughs> well, that goes sort of goes into the whole thing of what would you say? Out of your music, Nat, who would be the most influence into your music? As far as, like, a, uh, an artist out there now, you mean? Either artist now could be, you know, family, you know, influence necessarily. I sort of leave it broad because it's all different yeah. ways. Well, I, it's, it's actually, it's, it's funny you say that because I had sort of what's called, I call it like a lead guitar syndrome. Okay. So what this is, 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 is with my MD badge, is when you're a lead guitarist, which I, I grew up playing and loving lead guitar, you know. Mm. So, you know, 12, 13, 14, 15, you know, you hear what, Clapton, Hendrix, yeah. you know, the sort of Bible, you know. Um, and long story short, as time went on, especially when I went to music school, I went into music school thinking, like, great, I want to learn how to play, like, Dwayne Allman from the Allman Brothers, and blah, 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 blah. Uh, One thing led to another, and I left writing songs, which was kind of strange to me because I'd never really done rhythm too much. Mm. I know kind of in a different sort of state of mind. And that leads me to the syndrome itself, which is, you know, for what I st- couldn't accept the direction I was headed, which was more of an acoustic-based, folk-based. Like I was still very much a lover of like rock and grunge music, and um, you know, distortion and experimental stuff, and electric guitar nonetheless, and things like that. 
And then slowly, the denial just wore off. So uh, I went I from, that. yeah, I went from having a solid state electric to, okay, let me try a semi-hollow body. Maybe that will give me the tone in my ear that I can handle, right? Yeah. You know, because I knew what I wanted to hear, but I, I couldn't get it. So I tried a semi-hollow body. All right, that didn't work. Let me try a hollow body. Here, these things are great. <laughs> you know, they look cool. <laughs> you know, like whenever there's like an event or something going on, you always see a picture of like a hollow body. Like, uh, uh, what is it? it like MTV Unplugs, like from all way back in the day. You know, you get the hollow body. Yeah. Uh, didn't work. And then finally one day I went to a folk store uh, when I was living in Seattle. And uh, I still got my sweetie over here, my guitar now still, but just kind of soaked it in. It was like, okay. This is where I'm headed. And it was just a progression. I mean, I started to run into, like, ironically, a lot of bluegrass Americana folk music okay. when I started to go to school. And I had this teacher who was, every Monday morning was the coolest thing to just go to class, sit there. And he would, just the way he played on the acoustic blew my mind. It was unbelievable. Um, have you ever heard of uh, like a guitarist named Tony Rice at all? Yeah. Or like either way, like more of that flat picking style of acoustic, where there really there's a lot of movement. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of almost a way to rip if you think on the acoustic, you know, because when these guys will play, um, traditionally a lot of it's found in like bluegrass music. You know how you can really fly, you know, and you'll hear that. Um, and it was just such an uh, such an experience to to watch this guy Monday mornings just do it with ease, you know. Now, mind you, he's one of those guys that would look at you and be like, "Just so you all know, you all, you know, are t <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. and just soak it in how bad you are, you know, because you can't get any worse than this now." You know, he did that kind of thing. Um, the whole tough thing, you know. Yeah. And, it's funny, only ran into him for a short time. You know how life is. Sometimes you run into people for just the amount of time. But one thing led to another. Started to check out some stuff that way. Um, just kept progressing and progressing. Started to find the power of songwriting itself. Uh, started to get more and more acoustic-based. Started to fall in love with old traditional music from 1870. You know, just anything. Mm -hmm. And loving the timelessness of how you could play something in essence nowadays and it could really people could still identify with it uh and then kind of led me to this point now where as a songwriter now i'm really working as like uh it's kind of cool i feel like when you're a songwriter you're like a few different people so mm -hmm. it's like when i'm in a room by myself i've got at least three four different people i've got a singer i've got a guitarist i've got an actual lyricist i've got a writer uh, you see what I mean? Like, you've got all different people. Um, so I've started to, to really, really focus more and more on each thing, and especially the overall tone as far as just to connect with people and, and really provide them this energy that I'm trying to give out. Um, and also just lyrically, you know, it's a lot of music I've ran into is either or. If you hear a song that's about an ice on the side of the street, that goes into a unicorns flying in the sky. And you're like, what the heck was that song about? But it sounded cool, you know? Yeah, definitely. Or, yep. Or you get the opposite. You get someone that's a like way intensive, like every descriptive thing. Like, you know, it's very, very, and they're, you know, really particular about all of it. Um, so I've tried to sort of consciously mesh in those things um, and really just connect with people. Like, just do my very best. Um, I come across sometimes as pretty extroverted, but I'm one of those people that it's hard sometimes to really admit how I feel. And, uh, you know, I always believe that I do that. Maybe there's some people that can get it, you know, and it can, it can help them in some way, whether they just have a good time, just cheers and toast or to, you know, not, not be, you know, not feel like they're alone, you name it. So it's, Kind of, that's kind of where I've led to in certain point. But other than that, of course, there's just have been a myriad of music artists and um, things like that outside of that that have just always sort of shaped what I like. But I try to be myself.
I, yeah, I definitely see that. Like, the funny thing is, what was that? Probably about two years ago, we, when we started doing this, the college marketing department, they actually sent a press release and said, well, we, you know, they heard of you, and then they had, you know, your content, well, you guys should, you know, check him out, all that, and see about either getting him in and, you know, all that. Sir, listen to your stuff, it's like, yeah, you know, definitely need to contact him and that about, you know, getting his spots in our rotation and maybe try to, you know, Skype phone. I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm so grateful we've actually been able to, um, not once, but twice, mm-hmm. you know, um, and I, I'm just so grateful that you, uh, you've enjoyed it, you know, it's funny, it's, it's really important for me for some reason to to do it not for myself. Yeah. Playing for people, but be doing it for a, a purpose, a reason, you know? <laughs> I gotcha. Oh, that's like the funny thing is the college marketing department running across, the, you know, their thing and that's it, and just forward it on to us and say, hey, you know. Oh, yeah. I can only imagine, too, how much I probably get, you know, just mm-hmm. in general throughout the whole year you know yeah oh definitely big time in that but here i sort of have a little maybe tough question that Uh oh i see it in your eyes (laughs) i've sort of been doing it all like the past like near two weeks now and probably even like the few that are later after this i'm going to sort of do the same thing of out of everything that you have done have recorded or that maybe you have in the works what would be the top three songs that you say yeah this i absolutely love these yeah nice one nice one yeah that is good um i don't know why there is one tune that's old older that i have recorded there's one um and i don't think i sent it to you this time I sent it last time, um, and it's a, a tune I love. It's called "On Your Own," um, very mellow, very um, kind of like folk-oriented, kind of just kind of trucks along kind of style. But to this day, for some reason, it's one of the only remaining tunes that and I've only got a handful on one album so far. I'm working on a new one coming up, mm-hmm. but um, I've still to this day. Um, it, I think everything about it was like just like a perfect love story, you know. It's like I feel like when you write songs, it's unfortunately kind of like you know if a guy or girl catches your eye, so you see you're like you know you're hanging out, you're having a drink, you know, you're like oh man, look at that. Probably more from a guy's perspective, obviously, um, but maybe a girl might be like oh he looks interesting. So I, you know, you get in song, you spend you spend the night with the song. It's the best thing of your life. And then all of a sudden, the next day, another song comes by. You know, oh, but what's that? So as yeah, you can see, yeah. it's like always these constant like love affairs. But um, I really loved this one because I don't know why. it. Um, I was in a terrible place, like absolutely terrible, like just felt like it was definitely one of those corners, you know, and like and something happened. And then within like five minutes or less, I wrote the whole thing. And it was spurred just from somebody like just giving without being without anyone asking. You know, something about it just touched me this way. And the way it came across, the way I wrote it out, was exactly how I would have wanted to do it. You know, it came from yeah, here. Yeah. It didn't come from anywhere up here. Um, and it translates to everybody. And that's what's really important that I love is it really is that that picture of like you know the person with the suitcase standing in front of a highway. And, like, you don't, that's how the movie ends. Like, you don't know. Um, and I feel like that's kind of the way life is for, for all of us. You know, we kind of, we think we have an idea, but. Very true. That's pretty, uh, that's dead on. Nice, nice. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I've always loved that song for that. Just the way it was said. Just playing it's a lot of fun. It's a mellow tune that's still my challenge. So when I have a set, I have to really pick carefully when I play it. 
and singing it has always been fun too. It's one of those tunes that I liked. Um, besides that, though, that's definitely one. I've got something new in the works that I'm hoping to get as soon as possible. It's a little bit more towards like a contemporary folk, like it's a little bit more folky um, style. I'm just trying to get a little more like uh, earthy and rootsy with it, but still trying to be kind of original. And um, I've got a few that I just like their energy. They're kind of energy pieces. So there is this, there's this one called In the Morning that I've been working on, and I'm still kind of mulling it in my head how to, how to finish it up. Mm. Um, but it really has to do with the, the fact, the visual in my head is literally like you're driving back to where you live, and you look at the exit, and you kind of just like look down at the wheel, and you look at the exit, and then you just keep driving. You know, um, just that kind of like, you know what, forget this. This is not working. Like, you know, like sky's the limit. You only live once. Let's go. Um, and it kind of portrays that energy. So it's a lot of fun to play. It definitely has that um, that cheer sort of, yeah. kind of feel to it a little bit more. Um, and then other than that, I have a lot of uh, seedlings, I guess, like, some things are, are coming together more faster than others. Um, a lot of it's been a work in progress right now for the other tunes. I'd say those are definitely on your own. There's definitely one that's like it's a time where you do at least three, four years. So that by now, you know, stand, I'm pretty confident in that, you know. Uh, the other ones will remain to be seen, but when I play some of them, it feels right. It's funny. What works for me is if it can connect with people in a way, like you said, where you're like, oh, I see that. Like everybody kind of, that's part of when I'm like, okay, I love this song because of that. Or it just does something for people. Where they love it. They're like, oh, this is great. This is great. You know? Yeah. Because everyone can relate music some shape or form in that. So. Yeah. 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 I definitely, I understand the feel. And yeah, like how you were taking, talking about the whole eggs in it yeah i can relate to that 100 percent every yeah, once yeah, in a yeah. while it's like yeah you, no i wish it could be anywhere else or yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah it's a great visual it is you know it's always isn't it amazing too in general with art you know mm-hmm. like the way one person will perceive it and then i'll it's like that game when you were a little kid you ever play this game where like someone will whisper in your ear and then like you go on a circle and oh, people the whole telephone that, thing, yeah. Is that what it's called? Yeah, that you go tell that, and at the end, yeah. it might be the same message. Yeah, it might yeah, have its it. own twist, or <laughs> yeah, it's going to yeah. be far left field of, wait, what? Yeah. Oh, yeah, and that's always what it is, too. It's always at the end, you're like, wow, all right. Uh, I love that. I feel like art is the same kind of deal. You know, you go in with one thing, and someone leaves, and they're like, yeah, it just reminds me of this. And it, it, it kind of blows your mind sometimes. You know, I couldn't have saw that coming in a million years. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, for, you know, actually, if that's how it's actually named. But, yeah, it's sort of like yeah, yeah. that. All right. I'll coin you to it. And uh, if, if for some reason I find out the name is wrong, I'll have to just I'll contact you back. And, and, yeah. and <laughs> I got gotcha. you. Yeah, I don't want to go completely out of record. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. That's good. That's good. So, are you guys winding down the week now? Like, am I towards the end of the week with this? Or like, how's it been going with this the the whole uh, the week? Yeah, it's been going. Like today, you're the actual kickoff of today. Last Sweet. Person Sweet. ends at like e, probably, hopefully, about eight, if not, wow. probably ten after. That's great. And have you had a lot of live like live stuff too? Oh, yeah, it's been a lot of live stuff. Even next week, it's a little bit more lighter. Yeah. But, yeah, the actual end of it's really two Mondays from now. Oh, wow. All right, so it's still got a little bit. Oh, yeah, that's so great. you're like the halfway point-ish. Yeah, 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 nice. I'm the hump day. <laughs> yeah, I don't mind. no one minds the hump day. You know what I mean. Very <laughs> true. Bit... Very true in that. <laughs> You know, it's better. I, you know, I've tried to love Mondays before. I don't know if you have, but 
Yeah, they have their times. Yep. <laughs> they have their times of, yeah, it's like, yeah, I'm done. Yeah, I'm checked out. Forget this. <laughs> yeah. To the ones of, well, you know, yeah. it's not bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really have tried. I remember one day I really tried really hard. I was like, you know what? I'm going to love this day. I'm going to, like, love it like my own. And at least I knew I tried. <laughs> yeah, it has that love hate relationship every once in a while. Yeah, oh, it's yeah. It's almost oh, yeah. like that day that shows out of 52 day or was it 52 times a year that it's like, you know, it's that love hate relationship. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That sounds like. That's totally. <laughs> Most definitely. But, so sure. is it just you alone in there? No, I actually had two other people back there. Oh, I scared them off, huh? It um, happens a lot. Not necessarily. They're waiting for, like, the other guys that are going to be coming in and that. They're going to be bringing in guitars and all that at two and... Oh, you know, yeah, yeah. That whole fun stuff. Yeah, yeah. Nice. So you got in-studio stuff going down. Oh, big time. Ah, oh, cool. I've always I've done only I've done a handful of those. I've always enjoyed those. Not I don't think I've done enough yet, but I like them. I like them. They're cool. Yeah, you never know if you're ever in a neighborhood. You'll oh, love absolutely. This place. I will totally stop by if I'm out there. Uh, you know, I did do a I did send out my seeds out to the whole state of Ohio ooh, a few months ago. So I'll keep throwing them seeds out, and sooner than later, I'll come by, bring my my sleeping bag. <laughs> 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 I gotcha. Well, we actually have hotels there, like right off the property up here, out in front uh -oh. of college. So, what is the fun in that? <laughs> well, bad thing is the college actually closes at eleven. Oh, all right. Yeah, I have to do one of those uh, real tricky moves. Make it, you know, hide under a desk or something, and not move all night so the alarms don't go off. One well, of those they deals. actually have police officers that walk through and make sure everyone's. Oh, man. Yeah, it's they're actually hard. that. They go that far. Wow, this is getting kind of I wonder if they've had this happen before. <laughs> oh, yeah, they have people here and there and that, you know, actually hunker down and that. And here, hell, I'm guilty of it. I was once here till like, 1 in the morning. Nice. Just just hang out, doing work, or? School stuff, stuff here, yeah. and, uh, you know. I can see it, though. It looks like a comfy place. It's where you're at most of the day. Why not? <laughs> Plus, it's less distractions, no TV, no cats going on your keyboard while you're typing something. Uh, oh, you, do you have a little creature at home? Yeah, too. Oh, nice. I, I love little creatures. Yeah, those cats have a very bad habit. They do that? They really do do that? Yeah, every once in a while, I walk across your keyboard. <laughs> Or every once in a while you get up, you go get a glass of water or something. Then you go yep. in and they're laying right on top of it. Nice. Do so they ever come up with these elaborate emails? Like these like 4,000 letter like sporadic letters all over the screen? I never had that happen. I had them nice. once close out of what I was working on. All right. All right. That painful mistake and I didn't save it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, man. Now, do you, do you have... You don't have kids, by chance, do you? No. It's a great setup for you, then, because if you ever do, let me tell you, I have experienced the, um, you know, where I was sitting at one point in time on my desk, I've got, like, you know, my, my plug to my computer, right? I love my computer dearly, and because computers cost about $5 million, chances of me getting a new one anytime soon are pretty slim, right? So, yeah. long story short, the best is like like it's just it doesn't work it's just expanded it's all i have to plug it in the wall the minute that thing shakes off the power things off forget it right turns right off so of course look guy runs and he's all pumped hits the switch you know like turns the whole thing i had a huge database and stuff and i'm like oh you know just trying to like you know because <laughs> you know what i mean to do it but you're still just like really holding yourself together you know like Really yeah, just trying yeah. to keep it cool. <laughs> I understand that. I got that. It's definitely something. So at least you'll be ready. At least you'll be ready. <laughs> True. If it ever happens. If it ever happens. 
I get in the habit now, like every 15 minutes or after you finish a decent paragraph and that, yeah, hit save. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, no, that's totally true. I, I, many, always slows up all of a sudden. Well, that's even here and there creating different audio files here and that. Yeah, you always learn every once in a while, save it out as, you know, a project. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, that's just the worst. If you lose, like, one of those things, it's such a bummer. Then you don't you remember fix- those certain spots you put things in that. and. Oh, yeah. yeah. You gotta love it. I know. <laughs> it's painful. <laughs> <laughs> but with that, I'll sort of ask of this. If you had a chance to play with anyone that influenced you as a musician, who would you choose to play with? Mm-hmm. That's a good one. Let's see. Now, oh, to play with them, huh? And also have an experience. Or even work with. Project. Yeah. I, I, I can think of a few. I think, you know, I think one of them that would be really big, and it's kind of generic, but um, I'd love to see how, like, just, Bob Dylan writes his words. I think it's just uh, a phenomenal talent and skill that the man has to, to, to keep simple words, like words that every human being can really understand, create almost like a novel to a certain degree. It's like a poetic novel, you know, like it's got the depth and the integrity of a novel, you know, with your kind of semi plot line, um, you know, characters, things like that, but it's, so it's a lot shorter, you know, between oh. two and four minutes. Obviously. And just his alliteration, just things, the way he's able to just, none other than put you there, some of his metaphors and things he does, I just, um, I really just think, are, I respect, I think are awesome. You know, it's because he's kind of like a, a cool mix of like a folk artist meets like a poet, like Robert Frost style kind of um, deal. And, and I, I love those worlds. I mean, I, I love poetry. I mean, you know, Bobby Frost is, is my man. I mean, he is, um, sometimes he writes stuff. Like, I'm done reading it, and I'm like, all right, like, good for you, you know? <laughs> good for you. You couldn't have said it or done it anymore. Um, and after him, I would probably say, Someone whom I just feel like it'd just be neat to really just have a conversation um, for some odd reason, uh, musically, you know, would probably be uh, uh, Ray LaMontagne. Uh, I don't know if you've ever heard of him at all. He's a singer, songwriter, kind of out of New England, but he's done very well for himself. Like, he's got a very cool sound. I, I like what he does. He kind of blends some soulfulness with sort of a folk roots. Um and he um, just strikes me as, a, you know, I don't know the guy, but he strikes me as a relatively pretty straightforward, honest guy. And, and that sounds cool. And I just like what he does, you know. Um, those are the two. And then um, on a lighter note, there is this fella I have run in uh, Tennessee songwriter. Like, he's a Nashville guy. Um, just impeccable songwriting. Like, mm-hmm. just, like, there's a certain, like, in the world of songwriting, you can hear sometimes when people really throw out those really neat tricks. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, all right, we're going to put a little orange here that this painting was black, you know? And, and look at how that one chord changed everything. Look at how that one little note really morphed everything. Look how this word, how we took a word like, like being in love and said like in love with being in love you know like play on words playing on words is a lot of fun like uh even the beatles that did please please me like it just sounds you know what i mean yeah um but he he he's another fellow i ran into who has a just come to center you know he's he's got some soul with his tunes um a heck of a player i mean i can't even fathom when i've seen some stuff this guy play and i I'm always just like, holy Toledo, like, unbelievable. But at the same time, just what he sings and, and how he writes his songs, I'm just like, those are really crisp, 
clean cut but soulful because you know in the industry it can be opposite you can get these songs that are very i'm sure you've heard them being in radio you get these songs that are very 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 standardized it's like in this week out the next um That's and it's hard true yeah do you see that often or here and there here yeah it's sort of here and there and that and here and there you have you know like britney spears it's a big thing in that then all of a sudden it dies then i hate autotunes with a passion <laughs> i think it's amazing that it actually became almost like its own genre like mm. uh, really their songs where they'll sing the whole song with blatant autotune as like an actual effect with it and uh yeah i don't i don't know that's that's a fascinating whole other ball game like the purity of music versus like technology and i mean they, 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 the recording can do so much it's unbelievable they can even take a tone and stretch it you're singing and you're like ah, i wish that was you know a little like two seconds longer they can figure out a way to actually make it two seconds um just stuff like that which i think is very cool but at the same time um i think the biggest challenges especially i've noticed with, for younger people um, you know, especially younger people that love music, let's say they might want to, let's say, like I remember when I was younger, right? Love, still really respect and love Nirvana, right? I loved Kurt, mm -hmm. love the whole Seattle thing. Um, and I wanted to sound like some of those singers, right? And little did I know, some of the songs of singing, you know, I try to sing, I'm like, how come I can't sound like this, you know? Um, and besides the fact that we're all humans, we're separate, and they obviously had their, their own niche and skill, um, you know, one day I was reading something and all of a sudden I realized, oh my God, you know, Drain You has five voices overdubbed on top of each other. There's no way I can sound like five voices. So you see what I mean? Like all of a sudden when you hear music nowadays, let's say you just hear on the radio, people are like, oh my God, I got to sing like that. Well, you also got to remember that there's probably some reverb on it. There's probably some delay on it. There's this, there's that. So Take it with a grain of salt, you know, like don't beat yourself up over it because um, what goes on now is far different than, let's say, when Black Sabbath went and did Sabbath 1. I heard they recorded it and, and had it done in two days. One day to play it, another day to master it. They went, did like a, basically played a live show. They put like, I heard a plastic thing in front of Ozzy and they just played the whole album. And that was that. <laughs> and those cats are unbelievable. You hear stories about those guys from the, the 50s, 60s. 70s you know like they're like if you can't do it in three takes then sorry you know it shouldn't be ready to go in the studio you know um That's definitely even me i know i'm somewhat guilty every once in a while when i'm creating little promos or whatever in the station and that yeah of copying maybe a beat because it's just a touch longer copying it and adding yeah. it on and that manipulating yeah, yeah. Here and there, like liners of that of all these different local artists that come in, going in their songs, taking out the instrumentals in certain spots and throw it behind it for the whole purity factor of it. Wow, that's neat. I didn't even know you could do that. <laughs> oh, well, that's pretty skilled. That's pretty cool. Oh, yeah, we record them in our back office and that, you know, um, like. I'll throw out one like "Good Night Tonight." You know, check us out at what was it? Where "Good Night Tonight" is their website dot com, mm -hmm. like things like that. And I go take you know maybe a guitar solo, something out of their song, and that I see and plop it there. Ah, that's really cool. That's pretty creative. A uh, whole purity thing of you know your stuff behind your stuff. Yeah. It's, it sounds, you know, I, I, it's beautifully common sense, too, which, you know, doesn't always have a place as much as it should. Very but true. I like that creativeness, because I'm sure you have to go through and, you know, you want to pick something that feels right, you know, other than yeah. just closing your eyes and kind of poking around and seeing what, where it's like, you know, close your eyes, aha, this spot's going to do, you know. <laughs> the huge thing is finding those spots that are long enough sometimes. That don't yeah. have the vocals in it. Oh, it's true. Yeah, yeah. The just right things. Even even like nowadays when I try to do like videos on my website and stuff, it's it's interesting because I'm 
how can I say? I'm I'm like I'm I'm like I'm I'm young and old at the same time. Like some of my ways of this day and age with this this quick social media stuff and everything. Sometimes I feel like I'm like a two hundred year old man. You know, I'm like, you know, how do you do that? You know, and I can figure it out. But um, even the videos, sometimes I'm like, all right, you know, this thing will only fit like 30 seconds. Yeah. What the heck am I going to pick in this 30 seconds that's going to like, you know, really carry something across? Because other than that, that's all I got, you know. That's fair. Even me here and there shooting different videos when people come in play here and that. Yeah. You know, Twitter, you know. I hate Twitter with a passion. You know, I can never, I can never do it. I, I don't know why. Um, I, I even had an account, and I love interacting with people. Don't get me wrong. I mean, if anyone wants to Facebook, Facebook me, and and just you know say hi and stuff, like I'm always into that. But I, I always had a hard time in life saying, hey, I, I'm drinking a water right now, and it's you know two o'clock. You know, like I, I can't report. Like uh, and talk about myself all day long. I just don't see, you know, like just ate some delicious tacos down the road, you know. Just thinking, boy, uh, I don't feel good. Don't go to the taco place, you know. Um, I, unfortunately, that one collected dust. So I give anyone credit who can keep up with that stuff. And um, heck, some people make great careers out of it. Even I noticed. Well, the funny thing, even the station has a Twitter, and I ended up linking our like page to it because of the yeah. whole 140 characters in that. Oh. So I have it linking everything we post off our like page to go over there and post uh, the link to it. <laughs> uh, I like that. I just Googled it, you know, how the link was at Twitter, yeah, the yeah. whatever, and just follow yeah. the step-by-step -step instructions. Yeah, oh yeah. That is amazing. I've done that too. Like a lot of internet sleuthing where I'm like, okay, how the heck do I do this to this? Um, it is amazing. I have to admit, like the internet has blown my mind with the randomest stuff that you can figure out how to do. Even literally using like a shaving brush. They have like videos and like a shaving brush and all this stuff. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> It comes very useful in that, especially in our little whole little industry with music and things and that. Yeah, well, it really, I mean, the, the internet has really made things very cool and the reaching out to people, being able to connect with people as compared to days where, you know, physical mail, you know, went out and letters and, and, and that's what couldn't have been that long ago. I mean... Computers were what mainstay in the early '90s. They started to become like household things. Yeah. So, and everyone feared Y2K. <laughs> and, uh, we Did you fear it? We actually bought a computer like a month prior to that. Nice, I like that. <laughs> it was speeding around at midnight to watch it crash. <laughs> oh, I did, I'm assuming it didn't crash. No. No, man. I mean, it would have been interesting. To watch, yeah, to watch a computer just crash. Yep. For some reason, I, I remember just the, the faint picture in my mind of seeing it just turn midnight and with that, and it was everything I thought would happen. <laughs> uh, human beings are fat, man. <laughs> we got our little things in that. Yeah, uh, it's got to make something always a little interesting, you know. Oh, things can't friend. just be like a normal day. The world somehow has got to end at least you know five times a year somewhere. Very true. I'll give you that. <laughs> I'll definitely give you that. So I'll sort of lead into one of my other lovely little burning questions of if you oh. had a choice of anywhere to play in the world, oh. where would you want to play? Good question. Oh. For some reason, I think first it would be nice, like, like an an outdoor event, but obviously not when it's about a thousand degrees out. True. Just because True. outdoor events, as lovely as they are, when it's, you know, you're in a certain region of the country, wherever it might be, and, you know, it's like 90 degrees out and you're outside playing, it can be rough. Like, I have a sweat pouring all over my instrument, you know. Um, then, uh, I don't know. 
weather too. <laughs> oh, it's the worst when it's the opposite. Like fall time is like the ultimate worst because you know everyone wants to hang on. They don't want to, like, you know, pack it in. So they're like, oh, let's have a music thing. You're outside, you know, like, the leaves are falling. It's like, you know, just where the rain. You have, like, cut-off gloves in your hands because your hands are freezing, you know. Um, trying, you you know, just as much. I'm trying to take it in. I'm like, it's so beautiful. Oh, oh I'm suffering so badly. It's so, be- you know. <laughs> um, Very true. It's tough. I mean, you know, in five, ten years, I might answer this question differently only because if I've had, if I, my uh, knowledge of places may grow, um, I definitely only know most domestic, like USA venues right now, but probably, um, I'd probably go with, ironically, the, like the Newport Folk Festival. I don't know why I've always wanted to play at that folk festival, like, um, have an opportunity just to, to just to be in that environment. It's just a cool festival. Um, the people that are going there love folk music, so that's nice. You know, it's nice to go yeah. to a place. People um, are really looking for the type of music that you're trying to promote um, and uh-huh. give to, and they're willing to, you know, take it in and listen. Um, or, like, you know, one of those major things, just for the heck of it, you know, like one of those, like, Bonnaroo or, like, one of those major, like, festivals where you're like, whoa, like, this, you know, just because if I could get any opportunity to play for as many people as possible, I'd be flattered because um, I love playing music. I like doing things for people. Um, if I can make an impact and at the same time, you know, do so and, and help them either have a good time or something, you know, Um I uh, can't ask in my world at least much better. You really can. So those are at least the ones I can think of right now. But you know, I'm sure I'm leaving out probably some pretty amazing places. Um, especially imagine like you know Europe and and the whole other side of the world. I bet they've got some super rad um, you know venues. Very true. So well, so have you ever been to a strange like a really excuse me, neat venue or like somewhere neat to see stuff? Not, not necessarily in that. It's many different places. Like when Panic at the Disco was down at the Wolstein, St- St- uh, Wolstein St- Center down in Cleveland. You had the Musica down in Akron and all that. Those are places I haven't been at, but you know, with the growing scene, sort of Cleveland, Akron, and that it would be mm-hmm. interesting. I got a good one for you. A long time ago, I I played a show up in Maine, and it was a, a really like I love Maine in general. Family in Maine, it's just a great place. Um, then I was up there, and of course, when you're in Maine, you're in Maine. Like you know, you're in Maine. Have you ever Have you ever been to like the Northeast, Northeast, like the way Northeast? The farthest I made it was uh, New York, New York. Okay. So New York State or actually the city? Yeah, the city too. Okay, because New York State is definitely yeah. has that rural thing going on too. Um, either way, you know, every state has its personality. So uh, Mainers definitely have their own um, personality, which I always love. It's, uh, it's pretty neat. It's pretty outgoing in like a main way. So anyways, we went to this place, and it was a cool place as far as it was an old, old, old barn they'd done over. Like, we're talking like a barn from like 1870 or something. Um, They did the whole thing over, and they made it look super cool. I mean, we're talking, you know, like those chairs are sitting where they have red velvet, you know, and you sit back. And, you know, it's like it's a step away from having like gas lights in the front of the stage, you know. Um super cool place but with it being Maine this was amazing there were um half of it was like you know this performance area and the other half was apparently animals that unfortunately had either been hit by cars or you name it stuff like that yeah. they actually yeah. taxidermied them and had a museum so <laughs> so you walk in and on one side it was like the whole thing but you actually could walk through i saw like a bobcat like they actually i think had a uh uh uh, overwhelming amount of bears for some reason. They had too many because I found one in, in the back of the stage. Like, I was literally like, you know, there were like, you know, a few rows of curtains and I was doing something and I moved one of the curtains and there was like a bear shoved in the corner, which, thank God it didn't creep me out. I don't know how it did. And I was just like, oh, they must have a lot of bears here, you know? 
in reality, I should have freaked out, you know. Um, but yeah, I'll never forget that it's just, it was probably one of the more unique places um, as far as, you know, you really just didn't see that coming. Sure, uh, sure. And there was a place in Canada once that had a speakeasy. I could tell it was an old, like, prohibition style place because there was an elevator you could take, especially in the hotel, that only went down into the basement. It was really weird. Like, I can't explain it, but there was no way. You could only get into the elevator if you went to, like, the end of the hotel on, like, the third floor. And it looked like a normal door. And then you go down, and it only went down into the basement. It didn't actually let you out any other place. That now, the weird. basement, yeah, the basement it did over, you know, you could tell it was, like, that catacomb Like, you know, it had, like, the arches. Uh, very cool place. I mean, really, really neat people. Um, you know, uh, I've only played in Canada once. I wouldn't mind mind playing again. Um, The people really uh, took it in more than I could have ever imagined. I mean, I I think they just have a different mindset up there. Um, So, you know, I feel like some of the people that I at least ran into, they could have listened to a song that was nine minutes long and taken everything out of it. Um, And compared to a lot of popular music now, that's nine minutes is... uh, That's a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably not gonna be happening unless you know you're you're feeling really good if you know what I mean, and you're you know listening to some you know jam band style thing or something you know. Very valid. <laughs> well, with that, I'll sort of since we only have a few more minutes in that, we'll go into if you could go or from a year from today, where do you want to be? with your music? Nice question. I like it. You're on today, brother. <laughs> oh, trust me. Are you always you... on like that? Yeah. Oh, boy. All I right. I switch them around and that some people later <laughs> today, they're going to get, you know, bits and parts and things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Well, maybe they're listening now. They're like, all right, good. Taking notes. Um, you know, to be honest, I think one of my most important missions right now is to make it a mission. Um, I really feel really drawn to uh, make my music something that matters to people and figuring out ways to do that so that um, people can really connect with it um, and that it can do something positive for, for them, whatever it may be, like I was saying earlier, whether it's having a good time or helping yourself get over things. Um, and also just like taking, you know, the, the crust off of things. It's tough, you know, when we're living everyday life and we kind of go through the rigors, it's hard sometimes to stop, really like stop and take a look around and be really grateful in one way or another for just even a moment, you know? Yeah. Uh, and, um, and also the challenges, and I speak from this, unfortunately, for my own life, is there are both, you know, there are moments of great light and there are moments of super great darkness. And um, the thing is, is both moments will give you what you kind of need, but that doesn't mean it's fun when you're, you know, going through the, the dark side of the tunnel. Um, but yeah. just to, to, to be that light, to just remind people, hey, things might be an absolute, like, disaster, but there's a reason. Hang tight and just keep walking, you know, um, because it's true. I've had plenty of times personally where I, I mean, it's been pretty rough. And, you know, all of a sudden a year later, it's like a Sherlock Holmes mystery. I, I understood why something happened. And I understood what I got from it. And I was like, oh, my God. You know, I can't believe that. Yeah. Doesn't mean it was fun, you know, <laughs> at all. I wouldn't wish any of it upon anyone. But um, just so people know, they're not alone. Very true. And to just go through and just have the opportunity to just play for as many people as possible, really. And do so in, in, um, in, in, in a year, if I could have the opportunity to connect with people like that um, and have them enjoy the general tone, because I'm, I, you know, I, I love music. I'm also out here to play for people as, uh, you know, to promote energy, feeling, you know, you know make it feel good. Um, if I can go out there and have a good time and, and 
play for people like myself. Um, and to be able to do that to for as many people as possible, that's a thing, you know. Um, I would be pretty happy. And to continue, I'm always, I, I love music, I love art. Um, I do my best to love life as much as possible. So I'm always going to try to um, take more and more things in that I can, both musically uh, and personally, and sort of mesh it in there. So fingers crossed. You know how it goes. You, yeah. You have your eyes set on something, and you might get there, but you might have to go, like, all over the place just to get there sometimes. Or even sort of just read just or something and then come up with maybe sort of even a new yeah. way totally absolutely you know i mean i heard a great uh saying once where it was talking about you know you know you want to go up to the top of the mountain but sometimes even though you know you want to go straight up it might not just come out that way it might you may have to go left then you have to go right then you have to go back down a little bit and you have to go up um and it's sort of the rigors of that that can be really challenging. But at the same time, you're gaining things from it. You're like, okay, I learned today how to climb with my pinky. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it, it's a figure of speech at least. And um, that doesn't mean it's 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 as much doesn't mean it's as instant gratification as going straight up. But um, if you just keep going, you'll get up there. You know. Um, true. But yeah, I always thought that was a cool saying. There was two things that, and the saying I always liked too, where it was at the end of the day. Always do your best to try to remember um, the good that happened because it's too easy sometimes to remember all the bad stuff. And I like that because, you know, you could be having a nice day and you're like, you know, someone totally, you know, junks all over your party. And, yeah. you know, the whole day going, oh, how could that person do that? You forget about all the like, good people that came around. Um, and I, I can't take any credit for that one. I ran into a very wise person that said that one, but I always liked that one. I was like, you know what? Like you said earlier, common sense, man. Anything that's common true. sense typically just gets the big check mark for me. That's very true. <laughs> Not when you don't see much of common sense every once in a while. Yeah, it has its place. I hear you. Sometimes I see it, and sometimes I'm not surprised I don't see it, even though I wish it did. Like a good example was last Friday that we got a light dust in the snow. It was sort of cold. Came up to the college stoplight to turn into that. The straightaway that goes into Kirtland, the red and yellow were covered with snow. And people were blowing through the uh, light. Oh, they weren't even like, they weren't even being cautious? No. <laughs> you could only uh, see the green. Oh, man. How did that work out? Oh. They had a cop sitting there for close to three hours until someone came okay. out and cleaned it. All right, there you go. All right, so at least it worked out. Man, yeah. Do you guys think you're done with the rough weather? I'm hoping. Like, today it's what? Let me check in that, my weather report and that. 57? It's going to be 64 today. Nice. All right. Fingers crossed. You know how weather can be, but fingers crossed. I mean... Don't get me wrong, I love myself a winner, but once you, especially for me, once you have to shovel, <laughs> it only can go so long until I'm like, oh, all right, please, please. That's definitely in that. Oh, yeah, we actually sir, had to start wrapping it up. Yeah, no, I yeah. figured, hey, I wanted to thank you so much. It's, oh, uh, thank you, sir. It's it's been a pleasure. I'm so grateful that you've been able to get my music. You like it. You're you're you know. I'm on the station. It's been awesome talking with you. Um, I know we had such deep talks. I was thinking we should have threw in a song or two, but it was more good talks than that. <laughs> but we'll get it in a rotation now. People will be hearing it though. Yeah. Hey, you can't go wrong. And uh, and. That, yeah, just thanks. I, I, I hope you guys have a great week as far as the, uh, the whole band week. It sounds really cool. I mean, you, you have definitely a lot of acts. It sounds like a lot of fun. It's really cool you're bringing that to the community. So I'm just pumped you could throw me in there and, you know, give me an opportunity to be part of it too. Oh, definitely appreciate, especially taking time to, you know, respond to us and throwing us your songs to throw in a rotation and all that. 
it's definitely and not really this good. This was, I absolutely love this conversation. Nice. I'm so grateful. I had a blast. It was great talking to you. Um, yeah, got sidetracked away from playing a track or two and that <laughs> by accident, but oh well, no harm, no foul. Hey, at least you got so you got my tunes, uh, so at least you know you can throw them. But uh, yeah, if anything else comes my way too, I'll be more than glad to either I'll send you out a CD or or um, you know MP3 or whatever works for you guys too. And uh, yeah, either way, email all that. You don't even have to send a CD because of email and that. So I know. That is kind of crazy. That is. Yeah, you could save a few bucks and then of sending it through the mail. Yeah, I like that. Or right, I'll take it. Because <laughs> we all have all to right. look out for one another. Yeah, no, I hear you. I, I hear you. Yeah. All right, brother. Will you take care of yourself? Oh, you too. We'll definitely and, get in touch. Great, and that, and well, because I have your email and the station email, so whenever we're doing this through the semesters and that, or even before that. Yeah. Yeah. And then, when in doubt, you can always go to uh, and that is stuff. But yeah, totally uh, stay oh, in touch. If people love or want to check out your music, that where do they check you out? Aha. Uh-huh. It's, uh, that. fortunately, my web is very easy to remember, but it's not. It's obviously www. Now it's green, but it's not like the color. It's G R E A E. So it's got a little bit of a different spelling. Um, at the same time, though, I think you can go on Google and just type in like. Uh, I think you can type in something similar to to the green, but it's G R E A N E, and that's where it's got everything. Like you go on the website and it's got you know um, sound clips. Uh, I'm working on a few videos, but I've got a little bit there. But mostly, it's it's the the, the premier things of the music. I got music on there. Uh, you know, I'm always in. Uh, if anyone wants to say hi on Facebook, it's got a, it's got links to that kind of stuff. It's got upcoming shows. It's got you know a store where you can buy the MP3s and stuff like that. Very good. But yeah, we'll definitely be in touch, and definitely thank you for your time. Hey, thanks, brother, all the time. And uh, yeah, have a great rest of the week, and uh, I look forward to seeing you again. You know, hopefully things are even better the next time we meet. Not really, have a good, you know, rest of the, or now sort of rest of Friday weekend, and enjoy Easter and all that. Oh, you're right, yes, I'm well aware. I'm already about Easter. (laughs) No, I know, I know. I'm waiting for that bunny to drop off eggs because it makes plenty of sense. A bunny dropping off eggs. <laughs> exactly. You know. That's one of my favorite holidays to talk about because I'm like, what, what? But you love it. You know what I mean? You're like, well, how can you say no to an egg that either a has chocolate or money in it? I'm not gonna say no, but it is a little strange. Sure. <laughs> Most definitely. But yeah. All right, brother. Take it easy, sir. Here you go. All right, thank you so much. And thank you, too. All right, cheers. Yeah, cheers, and take it easy, sir. I like doing that. Yeah, that's a good one. (laughs) (laughs) You rock, brother. Oh.